All right. So in this video, I'm going to cover three cool DIY projects that I found online. Now I have made all three of these. Uh, and so I'm going to first cover the original project and then I'll, cut, I'll show off my uh, variation, I guess, of it. Uh, now, all three of these uh, are things I found on Instructables. That's not like a requirement for this, but it just so happens that they're all from there. Uh, and I'll have the links to, to all three of them uh, in the description down below. And I'm gonna go in order of complexity and sort of difficulty and whatnot. So the first project will be the sort of simplest, easiest, most basic. And then the, the third one will be the sort of largest, most complex of the three. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. Project one is the Magnetic Levitating Lamp by Tomo Designs. Uh, and as the name implies, the sort of cool focus part of this project is the uh, levitating type bulb, uh, which is the result a, of a magnet in the bulb and then another magnet in the sort of roof of the base, uh, which causes the, you know, the magnetic attractions or uh, opposes the force of gravity and causes it to kind of float, which is quite cool. Uh, now, it is RGB, so there is an Arduino in the base to control the RGB lights, and along with uh, an Arduino in the base, there is also a um, magnetic reed switch in the base. And so, uh, when the magnet from the bulb is put in close proximity to the base, or to the reed switch in the base, it causes the um, uh, state of the reed switch to change, which tells the Arduino to turn off the light. So by taking the sort of bowl, lifting it off or putting it onto the base, you can turn on or shut off the lights, uh, which is quite a cool sort of wireless or um, hidden on off switch. And uh, yeah, I've always loved, uh, you know, projects or uh, things where it's like a sort of like the, you know, the magnet magnetic levitating globes and stuff like that, but I've never really had anything like that. And so, you know, I, I took one look at this project and was like, oh, it's, this is really cool with the, the sort of magnetic levitating part. And I was like, I got to make that. So, uh, yeah, and here's mine. I didn't want to do the RGB. I just wanted to do yellow light or white light. And so uh, no RGB also meant no Arduino. Uh, so it's just some, you know, basic white LEDs. And then I really wanted to make it this warm yellow lamp light color. And so I printed the diffusion bulb in yellow PLA to really emphasize the, the yellow. Uh, and then Again, no Arduino, but there is still a read switch down below to turn it on or turn it off. So that's still kind of this, uh, uh, you know, invisible way to sort of turn it on or turn it off. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. The one problem that I had really in making it was uh, in printing this sort of middle piece, the sort of middle part of this, uh, the base, uh, my printer would get to around about like, you know, in here, and then uh, the print would fail if we would like, uh, you know, kind of layer shifts. I'm not, I don't remember exactly what was going on because it's, you know, it's been a bit, but something a lot about like, I think be going, have, the printer head was having to sort of print over here and then go over here and then back and forth and back and forth. And so I think it, you know, kind of got knocked the, the printer head or something like that. And so, you know, I started getting like a layer shift around here and, or, you know, that was kind of best case or, you know, it might not, best case was a layer shift. Worst case was just, it was just, you know, turn into to noodle spaghetti. And so, uh, you know, the print would fail, but I managed to print it out. And then I uh, also made uh, several others for friends. Uh, and so th I made this, uh, this was all sort of happening kind of around finals week. Uh, and I was actually, it was finals, my final, <laughs> I was about to graduate as well. So uh, I made the uh, one for myself and some for uh, some people that were coming to, coming down to, to see me graduate as gifts. Uh, and so that kind of tells you the fact that I was doing this during all that other chaos kind of tells you how uh, easy it was to to make. Um, yeah, and it's quite a nice little lamp. Project number two is the solar system with glass marbles and lights by Jupe B1, which I was kind of shortening to just marble solar system light because that's kind of what it is. It's just this sort of stylized solar system with, uh, uh, you know, uh, little marbles to represent the planets. Uh, and so the, the core of it is you take this giant, great big piece of acrylic and uh, laser cut out some holes for the marbles and it's inset in the marbles. And then of course there's a sort of laser engraved uh, orbits. 
And so that whole piece gets mounted to a uh, laser cut wooden frame and base. Uh, and then uh, you take a, a strip of LEDs and, uh, you know, and set them around the, the rim of the acrylic. So they kind of shine into the, into the acrylic. And the end result was uh, just, it's, it's really, it's really quite cool. Uh, and so I, you know, I saw the, the, the photo of it all lit up on the guide and I was like, oh, I have to, that looks so cool. I have to make that. And so I did. Here's mine. You might recognize it as the thing that was kind of sitting back here in previous videos. It, I wound up not using the files that came with the original guide. I uh, imported those files into Fusion 360 and then the, I couldn't really get the, um, the, the dimensions were kind of wrong. And so I, you know, I could have pursued those files and gotten them working, but I kind of wound up just deciding to, to make my own. Uh, you know, it's not the, the hardest files to make. They're just, uh, you know, mostly just a bunch of concentric circles. Uh, so you'll notice, uh, you know, the slight differences in the dimensions. And then, of course, the big thing is the, the marbles are, I imagine, in very different spots than the original. And, of course, the other big thing is this base, um, because I, I I wanted to to go for just like a nice, it's like a nice, uh, thick uh, high infill, uh, PLA base. I just kind of like that aesthetic of this big, heavy base. Uh, and I also kind of didn't want to risk, uh, you know, potentially having to sort of wrestle and fight with some, uh, you know, laser cut wooden parts for the base and, you know, getting those together and sanding those potentially or whatever. Uh, and so I, yeah, made, you know, my own dimensions. Uh, now, this was my first time using a laser cutter and that was really quite cool. Uh, we love burning things and, I did some other stuff with it. I, <laughs> right, mistakes. All right, so there were a couple different mistakes with this, but the, the two biggest ones stemmed from, uh, both of them for me, not reading the original guide close enough, because uh, both of these are kind of mentioned in, in the original guide. Now, the first one, before I laser cut out the whole thing, I, uh, you know, was doing some some test calls for the, you know, test the marbles. And what I assumed, because there was sort of three different sizes of marbles, and I assumed that uh, all the marbles of a given size would be the exact same dimension. So I had like three tester marbles that I was like using and testing with these holes to try. And so I got the, the holes to like perfectly fit these three, you know, marbles that I was testing it with, uh, and then thought because they would they fit perfectly with those, it would fit perfectly with all the marbles. And of course, Later on, discover the reality that some of the marbles are bigger and some of them are smaller. Uh, now, the ones that are slightly bigger, it's not too big a deal, uh, but the ones that are slightly smaller, you know, suddenly you've got this, this hole that's a little bit too big for the marble, and so the marble's kind of moving around a bit in the hole. And so ideally, you want the, the hole to either be exactly the same dimension as the marble or slightly smaller, so that way the marble's kind of held in one spot. Uh, but, you know, just meant to, I just sort of bridged that gap between the hole and the marble uh, for the ones that were too small uh, with some some glue, which on its own wasn't too bad, but sort of contributed to, to the, the overall uh, issue of uh, glue on the acrylic as I'll, you know, <laughs> as I'm about to get to, uh, which was kind of problem number two. The uh, guide said to, as you know, when you first get the acrylic, there's a plastic cover on both sides, uh, you know, protecting the acrylic. And the guide recommends to just sort of peel back the rim of it, the kind of edge of it, so that way you can access the actual acrylic when you're gluing it to the frame, but you still keep the plastic on the middle bit to protect the acrylic from, from glue and everything. Uh, and I didn't do that, I just kind of peeled off the acrylic altogether. And so I wound up getting glue both from the frame and then also from the, the excess glue from the marbles kind of onto the acrylic. And so uh, uh, this project is really cool when it like you know it, the the sort of shining part of this project is how clear and crisp and clean the acrylic looks and so when you start getting uh you know glue and scratches and whatever on the acrylic it starts to really really stand out and uh it, it sort of detracts from the overall uh, beauty of it so i wound up spending many hours polishing the acrylic and sanding it and polishing uh to get it back to looking nice and shiny and clear uh to make it look good uh, and so uh, the coolest part of this project is when you first turn it on, because when it's off, it is this, uh, you know, the laser engravings don't really pop out very much. Uh, but then as soon as you turn it on, it just is like, oh, wow. And I think that that's the kind of coolest bit is when the laser engravings kind of pop out when you first turn it on. Uh, now, I made two, I, I made enough parts for two of these, and there was exactly one massive marble. So they're wound up being sort of two variations to to the design. You've got mine with this sort of dual star, you know, system as it were, with the two mini marbles in the middle. And then you've got uh, 
uh, this other one that uh, just had the, this massive blue marble in the middle. And the reason I made two of them was so that way uh, I could do it with a, a friend. Uh, we could both make our own. And so that was quite a cool, fun afternoon. It was like a fun, uh, you know, uh, afternoon crafts project. We, uh, you know, glued the acrylic to the, the wooden frame and then glued the marbles to the acrylic and, you know, did all that in the afternoon and kind of let it set and dry and then went off and had a fun evening at the, you know, the bars and, you know, <laughs> enjoying some, uh, you know, some, some outdoor fun. And then, uh, at, you know, one point <laughs> during that fun night, I wound up eating a, uh, quite a tasty snack consisting of a boiled egg dipped in chocolate pudding. You just look off the chocolate. No, I'm sucking some pudding first. What? Mmm, good pudding. With All the right. egg? Ew. I mean, you don't really taste the egg. Look at the yolk. And then after that night out on the town, we wound up coming back and working on it more deep into the night. And that what resulted in uh, around about 2 a.m. Uh, hers, at least, was more or less completed. And so we got to sort of turn it on for the first time. <laughs> It is 2.09 and we just finished, plug it in for the first time, hopefully it lights up. Oh, you can plug it in there, excellent. Okay, 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 okay. Do you want me to kill all the lights or? Well, I guess not yet. Here, I'll do, I'll do it like this. <laughs> Okay, ready? Wait, should um, I? Do you want to go ahead? Oh, plug it. Is it off? Huh? Is it off? Well, is there an off switch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's off right now. Okay, I didn't press anything, so it's off, it's off automatically, right? Oh. <laughs> Can I turn it on? She got it, yeah. Okay. See, it's on already. So overall, it was just kind of this like great, you know, afternoon, evening or afternoon and then, uh, you know, deep into the night arts and crafts project with some, you know, fun uh, bar activities in the middle. Uh, and just overall, such a satisfying project. So cool to turn it on. Uh, and really, if, especially if you don't make the mistakes that I made, uh, it's really quite a fast, uh, simple project. Uh, and it, it just, oh. I, hopefully you uh, <laughs> you agree. I think it looks really, really just properly cool. Project number three is the WeatherBot by DIY Machines. It's an ESP32 based weather forecasting device that uh, you, that is, you plug in your current location in the code and then the ESP32 will get the weather forecast for that location from the internet. And then it uses four servo motors to rotate four scene discs uh, to describe to create a scene that describes your current the current weather of your area. And then along with that, there is an e-ink display that will display the current forecast in actual uh, letters and numbers that you can read. Uh, and so it's quite the, it's quite a cool combination of you know current technology with you know the internet and ESP32 and an E8 display but also you know kind of adding this this element of like an old style barometer that would uh you know show the you know kind of show the weather through uh, a scene uh, and so I you know I, I I love things like this where it's just a mechanical way of just describing and displaying data and so I you know I saw the that and then plus I'd never worked with an E8 display like this before so it was uh, those two things together uh, it was like, oh, it's a really cool project. I got to make it. Here is mine. It's more or less like the original, uh, but I made it just a couple tweaks, more or less based off of personal preferences. I One of which was that I added these two panels to the front to make the, the front view a little bit neater, at least in my opinion. And then I also painted and, or not painted, colored in all of the, uh, the scenes with some Sharpies to make them pop out. And then of course, well, the original design had the ESP32 housed on a custom circuit board kind of in the back, in the base in the back here. Uh, and I kind of stubbornly wanted to use a uh, Adafruit uh, ESP32 and uh, e-ink display. And I really liked the idea of just being able to sandwich the ESP32 to the back of the e-ink display. And the original design didn't have enough space for that up here. So I wound up making my own version of the sort of this front face plate uh, to give me more room so I could just house the 
uh, ESP32 right back behind the display here. And because I was doing it like that, I wound up not using the, the, the uh, custom circuit board that came with the project. I just had everything housed up here. Now, overall, this was quite a uh, fun, fairly simple project to put together. And it was really quite satisfying when I first got the, the gears and the, all these scene discs together. And you could like sort of spin all these sort of concentric uh, axes and, you know, with the gears and the scene discs. And that was really like, oh, this is like a really cool thing to, to put together. And just overall, I really like things like this where you're displaying information in a mechanical manner. Uh, and I, I wound up making one for me and then one for my grandparents. And so, uh, you know, uh, mine was the first one. And so it's got a couple of different, uh, you know, tiny little mistakes. And then theirs I made, you know, slightly better. So I, I really like how theirs turned out, uh, especially. Now, I usually have mine in my bedroom and <laughs> more overall, I'm used to it, but uh, the it's using four continuous rotation servos, which are quite squeaky and annoying. And so I have it updating once an hour and as I say, overall, I'm used to that noise occurring potentially once an hour, but there have been times where like, you know, I'm about to nod off, partly asleep, and then, you know, this, this noise wakes me up again. And so I have uh, at least some ideas that I'm kind of playing around with to switch out these uh, servos for some nice silent motors that will hopefully make it, uh, you know, still be this cool, fun thing, but also be silent. And have, I feel like having it be silent will sort of increase its its quality of, you know, it already looks so cool. And then to have it be completely silent will just make it so much better. Uh, so that's kind of a, an idea I'm going to play around with in the future. Uh, but overall, you know, it's been, I've had this for uh, quite a long time now, or I guess, what has it been? So I made it summer 2022. And uh, fun fact, fun little thing. First night I turned it on, I you know, first night I, I officially plugged it in. I, I plugged it into my in my room and then went out to the uh, kind of living area of my apartment and watched a horror movie. And halfway through this horror movie, I hear this weird noise coming from my bedroom and it was this thing updating. And uh, fortunately it didn't freak me out, but it really could have, because again, I was watching a horror movie and suddenly there's this unknown weird noise coming from my bedroom. Uh, but overall, I, I was really impressed with how neat and clean uh, this project, what the, the original guide and the original project was, especially the code. It was just like, <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, this is a well done project. And so, uh, yeah, I recommend. So that's it. Those are the three projects. I hope you've enjoyed them. As I said before, the links to all three guides are going to be in the description. And uh, yeah, if you're feeling like it, let me know down in the comments below which one you liked the best and which one, if any, you'd, you'd want to do yourself. And that's, that's it. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll, I'll see you later.